glory and praise show, my dear sisters and brothers. It is The Faith Perspective with me, Andre, and with Beatrice de Cruz. That's right. And uh, here on The Faith Perspective, we get the opportunity to discuss trending issues or events in the church and in the world. Mm, and I don't know if you know, I'm sure you do, right? First September, we actually began the season of creation uh, with the World Day of Prayer for the Care of Creation, which continues right up to the 4th of October, which is the Feast of St. Francis of Assisi. That's right, yes. <laughs> of course, we knew that. <laughs> it's too I early for a quiz, la. Ladies today. You know. <laughs> yes. Today, who's feast? Oh, yeah, never mind, never mind. <laughs> Don't want to test you more than that. <laughs> now, in 2015, just to give you a bit of a background there, right? In 2015, Laudato Si, an, encycl- an encyclical written by uh, Pope Francis, uh, was published. And this letter uh, was addressed to everyone, yes? Catholics and people all around the world are asked to take action to reduce human impact mm-hmm. on the environment and preserve our common home for present and future generations. And similarly, in his message for the World Day of Prayer for the Care of Creation, Pope Francis urges everyone to return to the topic of ecological conversion as a reality to be safeguarded as a sacred gift from our Creator. That's right. And today in our studio, we enter into a time of dialogue about our common home, that is the earth. And helping us to begin this conversation are two people who are very familiar with uh, ecology. Uh, And no, I'm not referring to St. Francis of Assisi this time, but uh, Dr. Maxine Mao and Juliana Fu. So welcome to Catholic SG Radio, the both of you. Hello, ladies. Hi. So to share a little bit more about the both of them, they are part of the Care for Creation Committee at Caritas. Mm. So Juliana Fu is uh, Executive Director of Caritas and Dr. Maxine Mao is a biology lecturer at NUS and has more than 10 years of research experience in aquatic uh, ecology research. So together with the Care for Creation community, both of them dig deep to plant the seeds of the message of the Laudato Si in parishes and in the archdiocese through activities such as beach cleanups and even an upcoming tree planting event. Mm. So recently in August, uh, Dr. Maxine was also part of the fourth Congress on the Care of Creation in Lisbon, which aims to promote dialogue between young people and experts on the commitment to integral ecology. Mm. Yes. So you just about missed World Youth Day? I attended World Youth Day. Oh, you did? Oh, nice. Yes, I was right, a volunteer. Nice. Oh, You cool. would have fitted in, right? <laughs> <laughs> okay, who is going to answer this question? Can you please just give us a little bit of a background uh, about Laudato Si? I know I mentioned it a little bit in my opener. Which one of you is going to take this one? Okay. (laughs) (laughs) So Laudato Si uh, was the second encyclical written by Pope Francis. And he wrote it to, of course, alert the global church and the global community about the rising environmental crisis globally. And the meaning of Laudato Si actually is taken from the first part of the canticle from St. Francis of Assisi, meaning praise be to you, my Lord. So it reminds us that our common home is like a sister with whom we share our life and a beautiful mother who opens her arms to embrace us. The encyclical has the subtitle of Care for Our Common Home as well, and in it, the Pope really criticizes the consumerism, the irresponsible development. Um, He laments environmental degradation and global warming, and he calls all people to take swift and unified global action. Uh, One of the lines that he said in Laudato Si is that the urgent challenge to protect our common home includes a concern to bring the whole human family together to seek a sustainable and integral development for we know that things can change. So he mentions pollution, water scarcity, the lack of proper stewardship, loss of biodiversity and global inequality. He also mentions that the poor and the marginalized are the people who are the most affected by sea level rise, by climate warming, amongst other threats. So one last uh, line that he mentions is that um, we have to realize that the true ecological approach always becomes a social approach. It must integrate questions of justice in the debates on the environment so as to hear both the cry of the earth and the cry of the poor. So it's important to understand that in caring for creation, we are caring for the poorest and the most marginalized in the global community, and as they are the most vulnerable in the face of environmental catastrophes. You know, I don't 
know or I, I don't know whether people really realize the impact uh, that the, of the irresponsibility that uh, many of us exercise um, when we just use anything and everything at our will, you know, and we don't realize also if we do do something about it, we are actually helping the poorest of the poor. Exactly, exactly. So um, one of the things that he's calling us to do, especially within this uh, encyclical, is that he's calling us to remember St. Francis of Assisi Mm -hmm. and that we come to realize that a healthy relationship with creation is one that is an overall personal conversion. That means it's an ecological conversion and it's a recognition of our own sins, our own faults, and how have we led to other people's hurt? How have we used and abused the earth to the point that it is no longer sustainable and we only take what is for ourselves and we don't care about the goodness for others as well. Mm. Goodness. Mm. All right. Yeah. And Juliana, I think yes. you, maybe you can share with us a little bit more on um, why does Caritas see it as part of its mission to take up the cause of being active in protecting Mother Earth? Yeah. Okay. So um, the mission of Caritas is really to fulfill the Catholic Church's social mission especially really for the most vulnerable in society. So one impact, uh, one important part of the Catholic social teachings is actually on the principle of the dignity of creation. Mm. So really, as uh, Maxine has shared, God has conceived uh, really creation to be the support system of human life. Um, and we are called to be stewards to keep tilling and keeping it uh, in a sustainable fashion. Right? So we are assigned by God to be the stewards of creation. And with this role, really, we need to care for it and respect it, protect it as a great gift. So the the if effects of our human activities have, like Maxine has been sharing, mm. has really put the um, disproportionate strain on Mother Earth, um, especially on the poorest and the most oppressed in society, who really depend very much on the environment for a livelihood and their lives. And hence, Caritas, with its mission of um, really... Um, putting forth the social mission of the Catholic Church um, really looks at the integral ecology that links the environment to our brothers and sisters uh, who we are called to care for. And hence, um, this is really our way to carry out um, or apply the Catholic social teachings mm. uh, via the teachings of Laudato Si. Actually, yeah. it's, it's very beautiful if you, if you think about it, if you sit down and you think about it, it's already linked and I think somewhere in the encyclical also, Pope Francis says, when we care for the environment, we care for each other, right? And, and so definitely in, in this caring for the environment, we are actually now beginning to understand also of the effects uh, of our own selfishness yep. and uh, realizing that, my goodness, it is causing trouble, not <laughs> here, but somewhere else. Yep. Um, so I just want to ask, how is Caritas then helping to enlighten uh, Catholics about Laudato Si here in Singapore? Okay. So really, um, as I shared earlier, as the official social and community arm of the Catholic Church of Singapore, um, we have the opportunity to actually support the Archdiocese in its efforts in promoting Laudato Si, right? And this is across the various channels, parishes, schools, um, the different organizations. And the efforts really span two levels. First, of course, is awareness. Right. And then thereafter, we are looking at really more efforts to have green initiatives um, across the Archdiocese. So on the awareness front, um, really we are looking at educational talks, activities, and also to support, um, to create more ministries in the parishes for Care for Creation, Mm. right? So a Care for Creation conference was also jointly held, um, I think during the COVID time in 2021, between Caritas and St. Ignatius. So that was a very good platform in which um, we brought people, uh, like-minded people together, um, to facilitate conversations, mm. uh, to spark interest, and most importantly, I think, action across the Archdiocese. Because right. when such a conference is held, you get participation from um, really 
all across the parishes. Mm. Right? So from the conference, one good thing, one good fruit was really that now we have a network of about um, 80 individuals right. um, from 22 parishes um, who are actively sharing ideas and information to drive greater awareness and interest. Uh, from Caritas itself, uh, we are starting small as well and trying to do uh, more initiatives. So one um, interesting initiative that we've started is really our washing ministry, ah, right? Yes. So this uh, supports any um, events uh, by providing um, the service of reusable cutlery for events, right, to really cut down the use of uh, disposables. And not do we just um, provide the cutleries, reusables, uh, we also provide the volunteers to help to wash up um, so that these can be reused. Right? So we have seen that um, very encouraging uh, response and interest right. uh, in organisers of events. So besides Caritas, parishes like St. Ignatius, St. Vincent de Paul, St. Francis Xavier, uh, COTT, Church of Transfiguration, mm. uh, they also have created their own Laudato Si movements. Oh, nice. And created nice. projects like Edible Fruit Gardens, mm. or Edible Gardens, okay, upcycling projects, and meditation walks, uh, St. Ignatius has that. Or planting of trees, right? So these are efforts that we have seen sprout up, right? Mm. And really, there is really so much more that we can do. And right. the journey is just beginning. And I think really it's an archdiocesan effort that we're trying to uh, bring together. Correct. I, you know, the thing is, I also just want to share with our sisters and brothers that uh, Caritas Worldwide has actually taken on yes. uh, this whole um I should say, actually, a burden in a sense yeah. uh, to to really um, champion uh, the environment, mm. right? Yeah. Uh, through the work that uh, Caritas has already uh, been doing yeah. so wonderfully throughout the world uh, and here in Singapore. So, I just want to ask, how is how are our local Catholics <laughs> responding? I mean, you've you've you mentioned all those parishes, and I'm actually really very, uh, uh, what do you call it, I'm very happy to hear that they are uh, so many of them, and I know many of them who are uh, also involved. So uh, whilst you mentioned, and most of the, the churches I notice are in the Sarangoon area, really? <laughs> except uh, uh, St. Ignatius. Ignatius out in the West. Oh, right. Okay, I know Father Colin is very, very involved. Yep. Uh, he's Mr. Fruit Man himself. Yep. Uh, and we've had him on the program as well before. And, you know, you can, yep. you can tell uh, his, his passion, absolutely. But, yeah, so how are local Catholics responding um, to this? I think there's a lot of uh, mindset change still, behavioural change. It's, mm. it's a huge change management project, right? And I think um, not just talking about behavioural changes, but I think really the, the essence of why the call is so important, right? right? Like what Maxine has shared. So I would say that, that the take-up is increasing, but of course, a lot more can be done. What, what can we do? What can we do? Uh, you know, the, the thing is... Yeah. You know, in any kind of of um, messaging, right? If you give people too much uh, all the time, it gets people become sore you know, after a while. I think, yeah. you know, I, I think the the main takeaway here is that you can start really small. Right. Um, okay. You can just do little changes in your daily life. You know, um, maybe fast from meat a little bit, which mm-hmm. is what we do anyway on Fridays. Right. We can turn it into a two day a week instead of a one day a week. Nice. That's already going to benefit the environment quite a lot. Not only the environment. This yeah, <laughs> exactly. Um, also, uh, I think the the call the call and the interest from the Catholic community is increasing. And I recently did a talk at St. Bernadette's mm. on Saturday. So uh, 16 people came and they were really excited. They were really um, kind of, I hope that I kind of ignited the fire in them to really go out and plan their own Laudato Si um, activities. It can be anything like upcycling curtains, uh, beach clean it can be you know changing your the way you compost or having composting workshops because right. a lot of people don't know how to compost yeah so I think that will be really, really useful in the future. Right. Um, and then also just helping out the community in general. So like keeping our common areas clean, uh, offering to clean up the church, offering to you know separate the recycling for the church. It's such a small thing. But um, usually within churches, what happens is that a lot of this 
uh, work that has to be done is mm. either contracted out mm. yeah. or is not done with that care and love. Mm. Right. And I feel that whatever we we do for the church and whatever we do for care for creation has to come from a place of love and of care for the environment. And it helps when we teach our children like, okay, this is how you do recycling. This is how you properly uh, do planting of uh, little plants or growing of little you know vegetables and greenery. Mm. Mm. So I think that it's... It starts from there. If we show uh, and we demonstrate to children how we should behave, how should we treat the earth, mm. I think that things will change. But it depends on us to teach them properly that the earth is not a disposable thing that we can just use and throw away. And then when things get broken, we just uh, buy a new thing. Yeah. So this is a mentality that has to be changed. Is it true that most of those who are interested in the environment are the young. Uh, I would say that there's a there's there are a lot of people, uh, especially the young people, who are concerned with the environment, That's mainly right. because. Um, I teach in university as well. Yeah. So a lot of the youth are very concerned and they, they sometimes they get caught with this um, climate anxiety mm. and a bit of paralysis because they feel that what can they do? You right. know, it's it's they feel very helpless um, for what past generations have done and I don't Absolutely. blame them. Yeah. But I always tell them that the moment you start to work within an environmental um, community or you start to volunteer your time to do things outside of yourself, you will start to feel less anxiety. Right. Because you're actually contributing to the solution and not to the problem. Yeah. So actually, my, my, my question to you was bit, meant to be a bit more naughty because I wanted to <laughs> allude as to whether or not there were older people who would be willing to step forward and, you know, and be part of this. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, yeah? so, some older people are very keen on it, especially okay. if they have been, like, you know, involved in nature walks and they enjoy taking part in certain activities. Uh, certain right. activities. right. But, um, yeah, sometimes we do get a bit of pushback from the older people, older parishioners. Um, I think it's moving out of your comfort zone. Uh, That's very difficult for people. Um, but honestly, in essence, when you are living the faith, you are not supposed to be comfortable. Yeah, I, I don't want to be, you know, incorrect, yeah. uh, politically incorrect. But if you are truly living the faith, like you know, God calls us not to comfort, but to mm. achieve the overall good for Absolutely. humanity. Right. And sometimes it comes with some discomfort, but that discomfort is good for us. Mm. Would the approach maybe, uh, would we need to take a different approach when it came to the slightly uh, more senior crowd? Mm -hmm. uh, and now that we have two layers of seniors, right? <laughs> Young seniors. <laughs> the younger seniors. <laughs> <laughs> but whatever. Um, do you think maybe if we came from a, a bit more uh, spiritual, theological uh, route, route, yeah, I think definitely. Um, when when I was giving the talk at St. Bernadette's, I tried to link all of the the work that we've been doing in Care for Creation together with theology because it is very linked together. And okay. the more people understand how closely linked um, our faith is to Care for Creation, the more uh, impetus they're going to have to yeah. try to yeah. care for the environment. Yeah, that is great. Very nice. Mm -hmm. okay. Yeah, before we talk a little bit more about the how how you link uh, the the church's teachings to care for creation and uh, all that. Um, well, if you've just joined us on uh, Faith Perspective, today we have Juliana Fu, who is the Executive Director of Caritas, and Dr. Maxine, who is a Biology Lecturer at NUS. So both of them are part of the Care for Creation Committee at Caritas that organizes activities such as beach cleanups and even the upcoming tree planting event. Yeah, so we want to talk a little bit about the tree planting event. What really is the significance of planting trees in relation mm. to the call of Laudato Si? So actually in uh, Laudato Si, the Pope actually specifically mentions tree planting mm. as part of a way that we connect um, the covenant between people and the environment. Mm. And it helps us to get closer to nature because nowadays everyone lives in cities and the problem is that we're very disconnected from nature. And in order for us to come back to nature, um, it's... The tree planting is just a way to encourage the youth and people to really get their hands dirty and to plant a tree. Right. But also from a scientific perspective, 
tree planting also helps to increase our carbon sequestration potential in Singapore. Uh, hello, English, yes. please. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. It helps to increase our ability to uptake carbon so that we can reduce climate change and reduce climate warming. (laughs) So trees are a very, very important part of our whole climate uh, solution and our whole nature-based solution because we want solutions that are nature-based and not artificial. Mm. So planting trees is just uh, one of the ways that we can improve our carbon uptake and reduce our climate warming in the future. So so actually, this project, this tree planting project, is we are working very closely with National Parks Board right. uh, as part of their One Million Trees project. Oh, okay. So yeah. we're part of that project now. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Wonderful. So does it doesn't have to be a specific kind of tree or a species of trees. Usually, we will try to choose trees that are, of course, native to Singapore that can grow well along the roadside. Right. Um, we haven't exactly selected the trees for our tree planting event yet because it depends on the supply. Right. And we're, we're, very, we're working very closely with National Parks Board on this. But some of the trees that they have suggested to us are very big trees. They grow up to 50 meters tall. Some grow up to 30 meters tall. Oh. Uh, two of them are natives. So one of them is the... Um, Diaspirus buxifolia, and another is the Pomesia pinata. So both of these trees are native to Singapore. One of them is a butterfly host tree. Mm, so by nice. planting this type of tree, you're actually increasing the biodiversity along the roadside, right. mm. and you are increasing the insect diversity as well as providing shade for passersby who are walking along Absolutely. the roadside. And also you are allowing people to appreciate nature and also to uh, get some uh, reprieve from the sun. Mm. Okay, because, you know, I mean, trees that are, pl- or plants that are along the the roads, right, they really have to take the, the soot, the dust, the what have you. Yeah. Right? So they must be really quite tough. Exactly. So these two species, uh, they are natives to Singapore. They are very suitable for roadside plantings. Okay. And they can handle full sun to semi-shade. So on days that sometimes tends to be a bit cloudy, uh, they'll still do well. Mm. They do require quite a lot of watering. So that will be oh. done by um, our, our environment. Yeah, <laughs> so by uh, National Parks Board. And they will grow very well in our climate. But of course, they also need, need to be tended to. They need to be cared for. So after we plant the trees, we will also cover uh, the surrounding root area with mulch. We will water them and make sure that they are properly cared for. And the trees we are planting are also of a certain size. Right. They are not they're too not small. Saplings, They're right? not saplings okay. because they need to be able to root and survive right. in that uh, roadside environment, which, as you said, is quite harsh. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Mm. Okay. Okay. So, what has the response been so far with uh, this tree planting uh, project? And any idea on what the participants may be expecting as they come for this? Mm, yeah, what are they expecting? <laughs> so, um, I'll tell you about the number. I'm not sure what they're expecting. <laughs> the number so far is about 54 participants, but we're hoping to get that up to 80 to 90 participants. So, there's still a lot of slots open. If anyone wants to join us for our tree planting event, which is on the 16th of September from 9 a.m. to 10:30. Yeah, okay, uh, not not long more, you know. Huh? Yeah, you can go online on Caritas to find the link, and then you can sign up for it. Um, just make sure that you wear covered shoes and proper field gear so that you are uh, properly attired. Right. For what they could be expecting. Um, I feel that some people are signing up and they have experience planting trees in Singapore because the One Million Tree Project has been going on for a while. Yes, But some people signing up have no expectations or they don't know what to expect. (laughs) So I think that's going to be... a big thing, obviously. No, no, no. (laughs) But I'm really looking forward to it because I really feel that people are going to have a lot of fun. They're going to get their hands dirty. It's going to be a bit tiring. They're going to be sweating. um, But I think it's going to really open their eyes as well to how difficult it is to plant trees. And so when you realise how difficult it is, then you realise that, oh, I I actually should appreciate nature more and that don't take Mm. things for granted. Mm. Because I feel like in Singapore, because we live in such a green city, we tend to take our greenery for granted. Uh, Especially our streetscape where no one really Mm. thinks about the tree that they see on Mm. the side of the road. But after they've planted maybe two or three trees, that's when they will understand, oh, this is hard work. Mm. 
and it's back breaking yeah. and it has and it gives you a deeper appreciation for what people have to do for us so the participants will have to dig the holes definitely <laughs> it's wonderful. all part of it wonderful okay well you know as long as you come uh, well prepared uh, you come hydrated bring your water bring your mm. cap or whatever it is mm. and uh, you generally will be fine yeah. just yeah. bring those muscles and, and the, the thing is you know i mean we we used to do things like this when we were in school we mm. used to do gardening and what have you and all that i don't know why that all, all seemed to stop yeah. but so has again i'm going to ask is uh, It'll be interesting to find out those who have signed up, right? What <laughs> what the the age group is? Uh, the, yes. demographic, yeah. the demographic. Yeah, the demographic. Um, I think yeah. we will do what we will do is that we will send out a survey after we are done, <laughs> and we'll ask them for their feedback. We'll ask them how right. did you feel? Uh, was the experience good for you? Was it bad? Did yeah. you sweat too much? Were you uh, uh, horrified at how tiring <laughs> and how heavy this tree was? Or, right. yeah. And I think that it. And that feedback is going to help us to plan future events as yep. well. But um, I also have to say that if uh, during the tree planting, if you are tired, you, mm. you can also take a break. Yeah. Nobody is asking you to keep yeah. working and all we, for the we, entire time. We want to replace trees, not people. <laughs> And we'll also group a few individuals together yes. to, right, to work, right. to work yeah. together. Yeah, to work That's together. right. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, okay, so we've not, you know, uh, smoke screened it. Uh, <laughs> as Maxine said, it's going to be back-breaking work. Yes. That's but right. it's going to be fun. Yeah. Uh, and the thing is, I think this is a great opportunity for the community to come and, and to be witnesses to our own Christian community. Yeah, exactly. Right? And, and working yeah. together and really all hands on mm. deck. Mm. Yeah. It's a right? different experience. 1 right? Corinthians yeah. 12. <laughs> you yeah. know? Right? So every, everything, all the, the hands and legs all have to come together. Yeah. Right? And the next time they drive past this road that they're going to be on, which is Kaki Bukit Road 2. I was just about to ask <laughs> where, where, <laughs> where it's it is. At, it's at Kaki Bukit Road 2. So it's an industrial area. Okay, okay. So the next time they drive past that, they're going to have, you know, a appreciation for the roadside trees. And then they're going to tell their children, I planted this tree yeah. way back when, right. you know. So right. I think that that, that long lasting memory and yes. that ability to tell your friends and your family. So there'll, like, be, hey, there'll be what? Little uh, labels there? Uh, they, they won't have labels with names, but they will be planted. Uh, in a very conspicuous and uh, area that everyone will be able to see them because ah, they are along the roadside. Right. Okay. Yes. Okay. And and do people have to like you know uh, go and take care of the tree that they've planted? <laughs> <laughs> no, they don't have to because National okay. Parks Board is going to make sure that they are watered and cared right. for. So of this course, is one baby you can foster out in that <laughs> sense. <laughs> of course, if you want to drive past and tell and let N Parks know that oh this tree uh, needs a bit more watering, you are more than welcome <laughs> to do that. Okay. Yeah. Okay. All right. Yeah. Oh, fantastic. Well, yeah, just in case, uh, what, what if we, you know, some of us may be listening to this right now and we feel that, oh, no, I don't think I'm, you know, I'm up for this. Uh. What other events uh, will Caritas be organizing during the season of creation and how can all of us participate? Mm. Okay. So I think, um, like I shared earlier on, one uh, interesting area is the washing ministry. Yes. We're mm. actually looking for more volunteers as well. You know, right? I've seen them in action yeah. and they are fantastic. Yes. That's right. Really yeah. fantastic. So they work behind the scenes and I think it's a very different kind of service that you offer. Yeah. Right? Uh, you, you build community as well while, while, while washing plates. Yeah. Right? And also, I think to your point, Andre, the, the profile. Right. For this yes. particular group, we do get uh, individuals who, who enjoy washing a bit more. Right. Mm. Right. So more of the women and, and individuals right. who volunteer. Right. Right. And they so actually find nice to see the men, fun. right? Yeah, yeah, that's right. <laughs> <Yep>. <laughs> After this, Andre is signing up. <laughs> okay. Okay. Actually, I always liked uh, the washing, the actually. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, it's, okay, it is not easy. It is backbreaking sometimes. <laughs> yes. But, you know, again, when you when we come the together, smaller things, yeah. everybody's hands, you know, makes work light. Mm. And uh, and it's in this this community of, of sharing and giving. Mm. And if you forget about, oh, poor me, you know, mm. Mm. You just, just remember that you're giving, yeah. right? Yeah. yeah. It makes work so much lighter. Yeah. 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 Um, I think for the washing ministry, I think what I feel when I see them take our plates and wash them, because um, I'm also a sponsor in the RCIA ministry in OLPS. Right. And they come in and they come and wash the plates after we are done with the reusable plates. I feel like that love 
You know, mm. it's so tangible. I feel so bad that, you know, I'm so <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, but that, that love that they're giving you by coming to wash your plates, I mean, it's yeah, so tangible. Is, yeah. It's just like how, you know, when you care for a child mm. and a child can't return anything, any of that care for you, mm. that love that they give you by coming to wash your plates, it's it's something else. Yeah. And I feel that it's just such a such a service that mm. is really touches me very deeply. Unconditional. Yeah, yeah exactly. Unconditional. Yeah. yeah. Okay, I just want to put you in a little bit of a spot, Max. <laughs> okay, so you deal with with uh, well close to our water resources, right? So maybe can you just share with us and just out of curiosity for our listeners and uh, viewers, um, how is the water di- uh, situation in Singapore? I mean, are we? Is it good? Is it bad? And how is the environment that we are living in affecting our water? So actually, the situation in Singapore is really good. Um, At the moment, we have four national taps. Uh, Basically, we rely on surface water, we have desalination, we have new water, and we also have um, a water agreement with Malaysia. That's right. So currently, we are quite um, healthy in terms of our water resource management. But of course, uh, any little bit we can do to actually preserve the health of our surface water Mm. goes a long way. Right. So obviously, that just means that not to throw trash indiscriminately to make sure that whatever trash we have is always going into the correct bin so that comes back to our recycling and our proper waste management Um, and to just be more aware of the fact that the water that is coming from the rains uh, and flowing into all of the reservoirs is part of our drinking water um, community and network. Mm. So just to be more appreciative and to be really more aware, uh, not to waste water, not to think that water is an infinite resource because it is not. And in light of climate change where um, a lot of uh, reservoirs are drying up, a lot of water resources are becoming more scarce in many, many other countries. I right. feel that because we are in such a good position, but we shouldn't take it for granted. And we shouldn't waste it and we should always appreciate whatever Mm. water we have. And... um, always uh, do our part to try to make sure that we are not throwing away, um, let, let's say when we are watering our gardens, we're not putting excessive fertilizer, right. when we are trying to uh, make our plants grow, we are not just adding indiscriminately to all of our garden area and to be mindful of the surface water that's running out of our garden and so on. Right, and yeah. how it affects just mm, correct. You know, people think, oh, it runs into the drain and away from me. You know? Correct. Yeah. It's the out of sight, out of mind mentality. Yeah. But we have to break this mentality and to realize that the water resources that we have um, within our reservoirs, within our streams, our rivers, and so on, that it belongs. It's a shared property. It's it a is. shared resource, mm. right. and that we should keep it clean. And so that we can participate in more water sports, we can be comfortable to be uh, on the reservoir doing kayaking and dragon boating yeah. and all of that. Yeah. So all of that comes with better appreciation of nature and not just using nature for what it can give us, but yeah. actually being proper stewards and taking care of it. So, you know, as long as we are good stewards, we can still enjoy the water. Of and, course. And, right? And of all course. the the area around it, which is mm-hmm. really actually really very beautiful. Yeah. I just wanted to ask, on the day of the tree planting, are mm. you all going to start off with a prayer? Yes. Uh, Yes, we have a small prayer card which we will give out to individual groups and then just before you plant the tree, you can say your prayer in your small little group just because there's so many of us and we're spread out along the roadside Ah, and we can't really gather because we'll cause a traffic jam. So we want to just gather (laughs) in our small groups. (laughs) (laughs) We want to gather in our small groups before you put the tree in the soil, you say the season of creation prayer which is Mm -hmm. from uh, the Ladato Si movement globally. And once you say that prayer, you put the, the tree in and then you can put the mulch on top. You can say another prayer uh-huh. as you are asking the, the Lord to provide the water and the nutrients for this particular tree and to help it grow. Ah, uh, yeah. So lovely. So we will be praying for you all. Uh, you. We've already actually got the prayer as well. Mm. Uh, and uh, so we'll be, we'll be praying it uh, throughout and, uh, and hopefully yeah. in that way uh, support you as well and uh, all your efforts. So thank you so thank much you. For, for, for coming down. Today we've been speaking to uh, Dr. Maxine Mao. Uh, she is a biologist and a lecturer in NUS. And also uh, we have Juliana, a good friend also, and uh, the <laughs> executive director of Caritas. Thank you so much 
Thank for you. coming down, ladies. Thank you for having yes. us. It's been a pleasure. Yes, so just a reminder, if you're listening to us right now, The Faith Perspective goes out every week on Tuesday mornings at 8.30am. And the encore broadcast is this uh, is tonight at 8pm, to get tomorrow at 5pm and Thursdays at 2.10pm. Okay, and if you want to catch uh, this uh, at your own time, of course, uh, then we have our podcasts which are on the uh, Catholic SG Radio app, on Spotify and on iTunes. Thank you so much for joining us here on The Faith Perspective here on Catholic SG Radio. Bye-bye. Bye.